Hey everyone, Steven Glicker here from Roll From Combat, and I decided to do this quick little video because this morning when I woke up, I had a trillion messages sent to me about the latest news, and I thought I would talk about it since this is what we cover on Roll For Combat. And if you watch Roll For Combat Live with myself and Mark Seifter, we talk about this quite a bit. And tomorrow we have, I believe we're going to have Linda Codega on with us. So if you want to see myself, Mark, and Linda on Roll For Combat Live tomorrow at 3 p.m., check that out. We'll probably talk about this then, but I thought I would just do a very quick little video. The news is that Dungeons & Dragons owner lays off 1,100 staff two weeks before Christmas to keep Hasbro healthy. So it turns out that Hasbro late yesterday said they were laying off 1,100 people, which is approximately 20% of Hasbro. And earlier this year, they laid off 800 people. So they're laying off 20% of their employees, which is not a small amount, and they're also closing one of their uh, headquarters. So let's take a look at this and talk about, well, what I've been saying all along. If you watch some of uh, the past World for Combat Lives, when we were reporting about this, is that the numbers for Hasbro were really bad. And I don't mean like kind of bad, I mean really bad. They are down for the toy sales about 20% this year. And the year before, they were down something like 20%. And the company makes toys. So if you're going to be down 20% on your toys, you are in deep, deep trouble. It's very hard to come back from that. And one of the main reasons they're down so much is because Hasbro makes toys that tie into movies. And for example, they make, oh, I don't know, Star Wars toys and G.I. Joe and Hasbro. Hasbro? No, I meant Transformers toys. And wouldn't that be funny if they made Hasbro's toys? Anyhow, the point is, is that movies this year have had a really bad year. In fact, this is the worst year I think I've ever seen in my lifetime when it comes to movies. And Disney is having maybe the worst year ever when it comes to their movies. They're just getting destroyed. And Hasbro was making toys for Disney movies. And if the Disney movies aren't doing well, who do you think is gonna be buying those toys? No one is buying those toys. So it's not a surprise, okay? We've been looking at these numbers. I said before this was probably gonna happen. And look, I take no joy in this. I feel terrible for these people. I really, I really do, but I do want to report on it and sort of say where they go from here so you get an idea. So one thing that people keep reporting, and I keep seeing it everywhere, is that they're like, well, Hasbro's being boasted, boasted, boosted by two products, Dungeons and & Dragons and Magic the Gathering, and that's what's keeping them healthy and holding up the entire company. Except for one problem, that is not true. If you look very closely at the numbers, D&D, okay, and Magic the Gathering is up something like 3% over the entire year. It's actually up very, very little. And of that, it's pretty much Magic. So Magic is holding up the company because Magic sales have been way up. And that mostly has to do with the Lord of the Rings. So you have Lord of the Rings holding up the entire company. Magic is up. D&D &D is way down because if you say Magic is up, and I think Magic was up, it's up a lot. It was up like 20, 40%, something like that. But the entire division is only up 3%. That means that something ain't selling that well, and we all know what that is. That's Dungeons & Dragons. Now, you're going to say to me, well, what about Baldur's Gate 3? Yeah, Baldur's Gate 3 did really, really well. And in fact, they made a fair amount of money from Baldur's Gate 3. But let, let's talk about that, because all these articles are also saying is that, yes, they're going to go into licensing and doing things like Baldur's Gate 3 to help the company. Okay, this really has been bothering me quite a bit. Baldur's Gate 3, the contract and the agreement was signed six years ago. Six years, maybe even seven, but at least six. Six years ago, no one, no one in Hasbro was around when that deal was signed. That deal was signed so long ago, and the money they're making now, they had nothing to do with. And in fact, 
Baldur's Gate 3 has been saving their bacon. And no one, if you told me a single person thought that Baldur's Gate 3 was going to take game of the year, and by the way, as bad as movies were this year, is as good as video games were this year. And in fact, I think that's one of the reasons why movies have been so bad. The video games this year, as someone who covers video games extensively, were out of control, okay? These were the best, best games I've seen I can't even remember. Like week after week after week, there was one blockbuster game after another. And let me tell you, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, when that thing came out, and it's almost sad. Okay, I feel bad for it because that game is one of the greatest games ever. And if you look at the Metacritics, like it's ranked like like the second or third best game in the history of video games. And everyone's like, okay, that game is gonna get game of the year. Well, Baldur's Gate 3 came and it's ranked higher. It's like, really? Really? And and everyone said there's no way that Zelda wasn't getting game of the year. Well, Baldur's Gate 3 got game of the year and it, it deserves to. It's it's actually, it's the good news is they're all great games. Anyhow, the point is, is that all this money that Baldur's Gate 3 is making and contributing to Hasbro's bottom line is something that will continue for a while. Don't get me wrong, it's going to continue to make money. But this is not something you could pivot into. You can't just pivot into signing, you know, contracts and doing deals like this. It takes years and years and years for these deals to go through and then for them to actually start making money. And the problem is, is that Hasbro is tanking so fast, so quickly, that they need to make money now and today. And they need to really do everything in their power. So what do they have coming up? Let's take a look at that. Well, the toys aren't going anywhere, so we can pretty much ignore the toys. So what else do they have? Well, they have, well, <laughs> they have a couple things. They have Dungeons and Dragons, which we all know it's coming out next year. And I don't think they can bring out those books fast enough. And then of course they have the digital desktop. And that has everything to do with Dungeons and Dragons Beyond and the new VTT and maps and all of that. And that is where they're hoping they will make money and save this company. Because if they can turn that into a sticky subscription service, again, I'm going to talk about this a lot more tomorrow in our live show, and they can get people constantly paying money and going to D&D &D Beyond and staying there forever, they will be able to not only make money, but have consistent cash flow. And that's really the secret, is, is that as people's tastes come and go, as we can see in you know toy manufacturing, is that they can't guarantee money from year to year. But if they manage to make Dungeons and Dragons into a subscription service, a service where you actually have to pay them every month, to get access to all your D&D rules and all your characters, and then of course the VTT adventures and everything else that you will probably never cancel it, or at least no longer cancel it as long as you're playing Dungeons and Dragons. And the other email I wanted to point out, and I'm gonna take a look at this real quick, is I got an email this morning <laughs> from D&D Beyond that says, did you crit your stealth check? We miss you at our table. Did you use your action to hide? Cause we haven't seen you around in the multiverse for a while. And just as I expected, they lost a huge number of people when everyone canceled D&D &D Beyond. And they were, oh man, they were so cavalier earlier in the year. They're like, eh, no one canceled. We're fine. Don't worry about it. Well, guess what? A lot of people prepay for a year, and now they're starting to really feel that hit because so many people canceled back in January that they're realizing, okay, we probably got a lot of subscriptions around the holidays. People were starting to get their books around now. You know, it's a very popular present to give, and all these subscriptions are like just not renewing and they are in deep trouble. So I've been getting all these emails really pushing hard for DND. Now, what about Magic the Gathering? Well, Magic the Gathering is in not much better shape. They keep raising their prices. I don't follow Magic as closely as I used to, but I keep hearing that the prices are going up more and more and more. Their paper quality is getting worse and worse and worse. They're doing everything in their power 
to make as much money as possible from magic, which of course makes sense. You know, I can't, I can't fault them for that. I mean, that's what they're going to do. But the point is, is that they are doing everything in the power to try to make money. So where does this go from here? Because they are in a lot of trouble. They're just not making money and they are going to have to pray and hope that D&D is able to become a very sticky product that they can get people to play it again and that they can get people into their online ecosphere and pay a monthly fee. Well, what's probably going to start happening next, and this is, this is when you know they're really in trouble, is if you start seeing them sell off properties, okay? That's kind of their next step because they can only cut so many employees, Okay, if they've already cut 800 and then another 1100, what's that, like 25%, 28% of the company? You can only fire so many people, all right? And that's only going to go for so long. And they owe something like, I think it's $4 billion in debt. And the company with its stock price is barely worth that. So they need to start earning money. And... I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing them, and it's going to happen, okay? Mark my words, is that they are going to sell some of their properties. They, I don't know which ones they would sell, like, you know, they wouldn't sell Monopoly, but, you know, maybe they sell Transformers, maybe. Maybe they sell G.I. Joe. I mean, these are iconic, iconic properties that Hasbro's owned forever, but if they can make, you know, like half a billion dollars or maybe even a couple of billion dollars off selling one of these properties, maybe they could. But here's the problem is who do they sell these to? OK, Mattel is not going to buy these properties because they're in just as bad shape. So you're like, well, Disney will buy them. Well, Disney, Disney isn't for the fight of their life right now. Disney has no money no time to spare. Disney is not buying any of this stuff. So who might buy it? I know it sounds insane, but believe it or not, it could be somebody like Hasbro, Hasbro, someone like Netflix, or I can't believe this, but Microsoft. I know it's crazy, but the biggest power players in Hollywood right now are the software companies. For those of you who don't know, my brother is... An A-lister, you can look him up, Danny Glicker, in Hollywood, and Danny and I talk a lot, and he's telling me everything that's going on in Hollywood. And right now, Hollywood is becoming, they're becoming like software companies, okay? What they're talking about a lot now is the Microsofts of the world, and they're talking about how everything is being bought up by software companies, and that they're going into Hollywood. Anyhow... When you see them starting to sell properties, then you know that things are in real trouble. And they're probably never, ever going to sell D&D, &D, and they're probably never, ever going to sell Magic. But you know what? A property like Transformers, that might be really interesting for somebody like Netflix or I'm trying to think who else there really is out there. I mean, Disney's the other big player. And Hulu is also owned by Disney, and they don't really have any money. So that's the other problem. It's like, who are they going to sell it to, and how much money are they going to get? I don't know how much money they can get. I don't see how much of a bidding war. And in the old days, you would have something like foreign groups uh, would go on and maybe buy it, but they're all in trouble. Ba basically, there's not a lot of places for them to go. So what does that mean for the future of Dungeons & Dragons and this hobby as a whole? I don't know, man. I, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of growing pains, and I believe that this is going to be it. This is going to be the make it or break it for Hasbro. If Hasbro does not able to get out of this tailspin and make D&D &D into the monster brand they think it can and should be, and let me tell you, D&D &D only makes maybe $100 million a year, if that. I don't even think it makes that. Okay, It doesn't do that great. Okay, with D and D Beyond, it probably makes a little bit more, maybe, maybe, maybe 150 million a year with the you know Baldur's Gate three money, maybe up to 200. But it's the point is, it's not making a huge amount of money for a multi billion dollar company. That's that's peanuts. The only thing that's making a billion dollars right now is Magic the Gathering, 
And Magic Gathering ain't going nowhere. They're just going to milk that thing to death. So they're going to they're going to get every penny out of Magic until there's nothing left. But they're really praying that these two properties hold them up. The other thing I see them doing is going heavy, heavy, heavy into digital. They've already done things with Monopoly Go, where they have just been putting out, you know, a lot of these uh, mobile games. And they'll probably start doing that. But all this stuff takes time. So I have a feeling it's going to get worse before it gets better. Anyway, with that, this is Steven Glicker from World from Combat. Do check us out. Check out all of our products at BattleZoo.com. If you want to play or use any of our cool products for your Pathfinder and 5e games where you can play a dragon, you can play a dungeon. We have bestiaries. We have um, the Year of Monsters where you can get to play things like slimes or devils and demons and intelligent weapons. That's our best ancestor i think we've ever done intelligent weapons that's right if you wanted to play an intelligent weapon if you want to play night blood if you want to play black razor you can now so check that out battlesu.com also do check us out every single week on roll for combat live right here wednesdays at 3 p.m eastern with myself mark seifter and usually a special guest we'll talk about all the latest news reviews and you can chat with us live and this week's special guest, I believe, is Linda Codega. So you can hang out with us and talk to them. With that, thank you for listening, and I'll talk to you later.